Black History Month, held each February, is a time for us to shine a light on our African American community. We are a diverse community with more than one million residents. And nearly 18% of our population identifies themselves as Black or African American. It is so critical for us to understand what has taken place, you know, what has led us to where we are today, um, and celebrate um, the uh, accomplishments as well as the con you know those contributions of the African American community. Um, because as the county continues to grow in diversity, uh, it is so important for all residents to see themselves reflected in um, the celebration and the acknowledgement of of its history and its past. This year, we are highlighting two initiatives focused on preserving black history in Montgomery County. The first is the African American Historic Sites Project. The project is designed to identify significant sites in the county, churches, cemeteries, schools, neighborhoods, farms, museums, and more, and create interpretive historical markers and other teaching materials to educate residents about the important history found there. It is very important because it is information that we believe and we know that must be shared with Montgomery County. Right now you really don't see a whole lot about African Americans in Montgomery County and we've been here since 1822 and so we really wanted to um, actually to educate people about who we are and what we have done in this county. The, uh, the project is to uh, what, bring the African American communities into view because it's been, it's been pushed aside for ages. Young people are not aware of the history of America. And we've come as far as we have because of what has happened in the past. It may not have been good, the good, the bad, and the ugly all came together to weave a pattern of what America is all about. And all the sites that we have identified actually came, the people who lived in these places came from a plantation. When the Emancipation Proclamation was written, the slaves had some place, they had to have a place to go. So when I was um, the African American liaison officer to County Executive Doug Duncan, I need a Neil Powell and I were working on projects to identify all historical sites in Montgomery County in terms of a map. County Council always put on a black history program. Several years ago, George Leventhal, he was a council member at that time, and he really wanted to focus on Montgomery County African American sites and places. So a map was created. It was called an interactive map. And then later on, at another um, Black History Month in the County Council Chamber, we talked about that during one of my presentations, and then afterwards Tom Hucker asked me about uh, have they been identified in terms of where people can find them, and I said no, just on a map. Once I, I found out about the work uh, that had gone into the mapping uh, on, the, on the planning website, it, it, to me it made perfect sense to make sure everybody, as many people, saw these contributions as possible by putting them in physical markers on the sites that uh, were of historical significance in Montgomery County. The funds were allocated by the county council and the work began. The members of the African American Historic Sites Project Committee include five longtime county residents who are descendants from slaves. All volunteers, they bring their expertise to the project, and along with a team from the Montgomery County Planning Department's Historic Preservation Office, the County Council, and community members and stakeholders, they are researching, writing, and creating the interpretive signs. The first five have been selected and will be placed soon. Each site has a fascinating history. Lincoln High School was the second of three Rockville schools to serve the county's African-American high school students during segregation. It opened in 1935. It is now a place of worship. And if you were black and during segregated time, you had to come to Rockville to go to school, to go to junior high school, high school, and junior college. During segregation, we could not, blacks and whites did not go to school together. And so that's why it's significant. It's, um, it's in, located in, a, in a Lincoln Park that was established in 1891. 
and uh, it's currently used by the Crusaders Baptist Church of God, which is, was started by Reverend Rodney Davis, who was a former student of Lincoln High School. The Elijah Rest Methodist Church and Cemetery is on property that was the site of a post-Civil War school, lodge hall, church, and cemetery that served the African-American communities of Jerusalem and Jonesville. The original 1871 church burned down in 1950, but was rebuilt soon thereafter. The church is currently vacant. The church was my mom's church. My mom was a Christian and baptized in that church. But in our community, half of the African-American community was uh, Methodist, another half was Southern Baptist. And so my father's church was Southern Baptist. So in my family, you always went to the church of the father, and plus that grandmother and sister. And so uh, sometimes we would alternate and go to mother's church. So the cemetery was really historic first. And I think because the church had been burned down and then was reconstructed, so the cemetery is the original, so it's a lot older than the church is. And in addition to that, what most people don't know is that in that field next to that church is where the Negro Baseball League played. This house belonged to Inez Ziegler Maccabee, a notable civil rights leader who passed away in 2014. Dating from the mid-1800s to the early 1900s, the original log structure was built by slaves for a local white farming family. The house itself actually came from off the plantation. It came off the Mullinex plantation. Uh, the slave there, Inez's great-great-grandfather was John Hosey, and he was a slave on the Mullinex plantation. John was given the, the house back in 1835. And by Inez being a great-great-granddaughter, then she was able to, when he passed it on, when he passed away and his siblings passed away, then Inez picked it up. So the, the significance of the home is that it's the oldest African-American home in Montgomery County. And she was a humanitarian. She fought for the people that was not able to fight for themselves. She had a wisdom about her with politics, rules, regulations, and she knew how to go through the system and to get things done by the law. She helped get the busing up to Damascus. She helped get the white-owned only signs removed and she allowed African-Americans to start being served from the back to be served in the front. Littonsville is one of Montgomery County's oldest African-American suburbs. It was named for Samuel Litton, a freed slave who bought land there in 1853. It was a segregated community. I'm a product of the two-room schoolhouse. Uh, we had the pot stove, we had outdoor uh, privies, one for the boys and one for the girls down through the woods. Um, the we didn't have running water. Our playground was the dirt driveway. The students also were expected to do the janitorial work, and the, the girls were expected to prepare the lunches for the, the school. So we should be learning while we were actually doing those kinds of duties. We were fighting for paved streets. It took them 26 years before they were paved the streets. In fact, they built a whole community of Rosemary Hills before they even at, at, attempted to work with our community. To get, the, as she says, the streets and the sewage and everything, we had to give up almost 60% of the neighborhood uh, just to do that. So we're only a little teeny part of the neighborhood. Uh, Brookfield Road was all residential. We were segregated, but we were still integrated in society in our own way, and we never lost a step. We were, in fact, many times we seemed to be ahead 
of what everybody else was doing. But we did it unto ourselves, and we enjoyed what we did. It was quality, first class. After the Civil War, former slaves began acquiring land near the junction of Brookville and Zion Roads. By 1878, a school and church anchored the southwestern corner. In 1968, the church burned down and a new one was built six years later. The original schoolhouse still remains. A freestanding bell tower now houses the original church bell. Mount Zion community, in most communities, not just Mount Zion, you always had, almost always had, a cemetery connected to the church along with a school. Once um, the Emancipation Proclamation was passed, then the plantation owners sold plots of land to their slaves. And then their slaves, then um, communities, then they were formed. These locations are just the beginning of the African American Historic Sites Project. During this upcoming year, more than 35 markers will be placed throughout the county. Another initiative that the Montgomery County Council, the Office of Human Rights, the Lincoln Park Historical Foundation, and other stakeholders are embarking on is the Remembrance and Reconciliation Commission. This commission is taking the lead in educating the community about lynchings against African Americans. In the U.S., there were more than 4,000 lynchings between 1880 and 1940. At least three occurred in Montgomery County. We have a specific name for this type of systematic domestic terrorism and murder of African Americans. One of the most heinous forms of it is called lynching. Um, but I think that word falls short of conveying the sheer brutality, the terror, the grotesque and violent nature of these public murders. The Office of Human Rights Director Stowe would, will staff, provide staff support to a commission that will bring together not only our schools and our Arts and Humanities Commission and our college and our county government, but also community leaders, activists from many walks of life to to create that community dialogue and to help us understand and achieve remembrance and reconciliation. It is our hope then that with this resolution that we're able then to put together a team of folks to look at Montgomery County's history critically, honestly, right forthly. The commission is also partnering with the Equal Justice Initiative based in Montgomery, Alabama and the Maryland Lynching Memorial Project in Towson, Maryland to recognize these victims. The plan is to place historical markers and collect soil in Montgomery County where the lynchings occurred, as well as create educational materials in an effort to combat racial terrorism and promote social justice. So it really is important for us to participate in this uh, from multiple levels. Uh, one, in acknowledging uh, and making sure that people understand uh, about their history, uh, understanding that there were some dark times that were here in Montgomery County, just like across uh, up and down a majority of the East Coast and to our South, uh, but then also about how we can now learn from this, uh, how we can take the lessons from uh, those types of uh, dark times and say, how do we rebuild? How do we make sure that folks have a trust uh, in their community? But to get to the root of structural and institutional racism, the county is taking a more intentional approach by working on a racial equity and social justice policy for county government. Unless we have structural components within uh, the way we do our work here in the county, we will not be able to begin to dismantle the, the structural uh, decisions and institutionalized structures that have led us to those disparities. So this is really the first step mm -hmm. and it is to adopt legislation at the end of this year to establish an equity policy in the county so we can hopefully uh, begin then to see some real progress. Mm -hmm.